Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Day morning. Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. Been lots of chaos around here today, actually. So I'm a few minutes late of joining you, but thanks for waiting for me and being patient and for joining me again for another conversation through our daily word today. So as always, I'm grateful you would join me and carve out time to be with me and share your time with me and offer greetings when you sign in. So thanks for doing that um, on our journey together. So I'm going to place flame to my Christ candle. As always, it's a reminder of the presence of the Holy Spirit with us and in my office. So if you have a candle, I invite you to light it as a reminder of the Holy Spirit's presence with you, wherever you are. So I've chosen for this one, we've done a couple days of the Sermon on the Mount, um, and Jesus begins to close it up in our scripture today. Matthew 7, verse 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. I always find it interesting in scripture or in other forms of communication and writing when you've reached the end and you've gotten all kinds of explanations and then these words, for this sums it up and it tries to condense it. You know, so I sometimes do it on Sunday morning. I'll say, I want to leave you with this. Or in other ways, when we talk to each other, we try to sum things up and we hear other speakers to try to say, here's what I was saying this entire time. And we try to sum it up. And sometimes, sometimes the summary is long. Sometimes the summary is rather short. And so Jesus, in all that he had to say, the Sermon on the Mount, and there are so many things. You can go back and read that entire thing. He begins to close it, and he says, This sums up the law and the prophets. Now, we know that this has come to be known, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But in all of it, it sums up the law and the prophets, and that's how it ends. So Jesus assumes, and rightly so, right, that, that everyone wants to be treated with fairness, kindness, with mercy and grace. And righteousness is part of the social harmony. It makes sense that the key to achieving that social harmony is treating each other with respect, like we would want to be treated. It's, it's practical. It makes sense. Um, if you're in a group, you know, any group that expends its resources on activities um, to create a mutual benefit is amazingly successful. We, we try to do that as the church, as the body of Christ, try to, you know, to create mutual benefit as we learn together and pray together and serve together. We do that mutually. You know, we, we don't stand out because our name's first or our name's in a title. But Jesus also knows, and rightly so, the reality that as human beings, we pursue our own self-interest. And I think that's presumed in this admonition. And Jesus just assumes that that's what we're going to do. And he, he understands that selfishness, um, narcissism, um, always, as we've talked about in the last few weeks, always wanted to be first. This... this um, abhorrent, if you will, ridiculous striving to be great. Um, it's self-destructive. It, um, righteousness, you know, is about serving God and community, treating others as we, as we would want to be treated, no matter what their station in life is. And, and, you know, Jesus, if you hear all of this and read this, Jesus admonishes from the Sermon on the Mount, don't let false teachers distract you from God's kingdom. Follow the voice of the master, seek God's kingdom, pursue righteousness, love and serve together as co-laborers in Christ. But to sum it up, as Jesus does for us, to sum it up in these powerful words, treat others as you want to be treated. This sums up the law and the prophets. And nested in this advice is the key to living, I think that sums up for us what it means to find success. 
Jesus says that choosing this perspective, you know, it's a narrow gate. Sometimes it's a path that's hard to see. It requires effort on our part. And success then, though, it kind of guarantees success if we follow it. Not success we can demand, of course, but success that we can trust will be ours in due time. So always always think, think about this. Treat others how you want to be treated. That's really hard, right? When Especially if the other person um, is, if we think the other person is acting bad or is a bad actor or, or not doing what they should do, that we act faithfully because that's what God calls us to. If you take up the, take the entire law and prophets, you know, and all the things that we know and all the things that Jesus taught in his life, and we look at this and we say, we hear Jesus say, this sums it up. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. Puts it in a package and says, Here, here's how you're supposed to live. We should love. We should offer mercy and grace and peace and kindness. And it should come and flow naturally from us to other people. Now, it's difficult. We, we get that, you know, sometimes... I haven't had a great day so far. <laughs> I've been in tears a couple times. I was in tears at Frisch's this morning. Kate's like, I'll just leave you alone. It's, you know, but at the same time, it was interesting. Um, at the same time, she came back a few minutes later just to say, are you okay? Treat others as you want to be treated. That's the call on us. And so this scripture reminds us today that the gate for this kind of living, the path is narrow. Um, it's not always easy to see, but it guarantees for us that we live as Christ would have us to live if we can carry this out. And that's something for us to, you know, uh, we just have to work on it day by day by day by day. Um, just try to do better every day. And if we fail, it doesn't mean that the next day is not better or the next five minutes aren't better. You know, we, we have this reminder that's built into us because of scripture, because of the Christ, the Jesus that we know. So that's our daily word for today. I hope it's a good word for you as it is for me. I, again, I apologize for being um, several minutes late today. So as always, know of God's love that surrounds you, know of my love for you, and I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.